Hey there everyone, welcome back to Dan Cave and welcome to part two of the Hasegawa Lancia Stratos in 24 scale. So part one covered all the bodywork stuff, so the prep, prime, paint, decal and clear coat. Part two is basically going to do the rest of it. It's going to do all the kind of running gear, the I'll say the engine bits, but it's curbside kit, so the kind of visible bits of the engine that you see from the curbside interior. Clean up the bodywork, get it all together and get the final photos. So that's today's video. Part two to the finale. Uh, so yeah, so as you can see, I, I was reasonably happy with, actually I was very happy with what went on in part one. I was... It, it was a good mojo builder. Obviously I mentioned that that difference in white between the white decals and the white paint. Uh, the more I watch the video edit process, the more I think I really should have just bitten the bullet and painstakingly masked out the white areas properly. Uh, it would have been much better. But, but either, you know, regardless, when I was in the model, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, uh, and I, I can I can live with it. Uh, but however, that's not today's focus. Today's focus is building the rest of the kit and getting it to completion. So, uh, so yeah. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to leave a comment as well. Uh, yeah. So let's not hang about. Let's uh, dive on over to the bench, which is over there, and uh, let's see how part two goes. So I'll be back at the end for my final thoughts. Go for it. So back on this build and it's time to get on with the chassis. So the chassis itself is a little bit of clean up, uh, mainly sprue attachment points, few seam lines. They're not going to be heavily visible, but it needs a bit of clean up anyway. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my hair today, but it's obviously in shot. Uh, and this is the bulkhead between the uh, driver's area and the engine area. So seam lines on, things like the steering rack, in around the suspension components, all of those get cleaned up with some UMP sanders and thinny sticks. And once I'm happy with that cleanup process, it's over to the spray booth, which is looking remarkably clean on this day. It doesn't look like that at the moment. And uh, it's a uh, UMP black primer is the primer of choice. So that's shot through the UMP Apex airbrush at about 30 PSI. And I'm going to lay down a couple of coats just to cover up that white plastic. But the UMP primer uh, covers really, really well, uh, dries fantastically, and is pretty uh, bulletproof. So yeah, so just progressing on with priming all those kind of chassis and interior parts, or at least the chassis parts at the moment. Uh, so these are some of the parts for the visible parts of the engine and gearbox. It is curbside, but there are some of the parts are visible from inside the rear wheel wells, things like that. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of parts to prime. It's quite an extended session. And as you can see, the spray booth is getting dirtier and dirtier as I progress getting towards more what it looks like on a daily basis. It's definitely due a deep clean soon, it really is. So once all those parts are primed, they are set aside and I progress on with cleaning up all the interior parts. And same process as before, cleaning up any of the sprue attachment points, uh, UMP thinny sticks and sanders to clean up any seam lines. And once again, once I'm happy that that's all done, it's back over to the spray booth for even more priming. And you guessed it, it's all primed in black again. So the only exception to that is going to be the suspension parts. Because uh, the springs, I think, are red on this. So once that primer is dried, I'm going to do a little bit of brush painting just to pick out the engine details that will be visible. So I do like to use Ravel Aqua Acrylics. I find them good for brush painting. I also find they do thin very well uh, with UMP's Universal Thinner uh, for airbrushing. But in this case, I'm using the trusty hairy stick. And just going for a little bit of brush painting. 
So once all those parts are dry, it's time to start assembling that engine area. That's pretty much a box section uh, with some panels in there to simulate parts of the engine. So it's out with some CA glue and pop all those parts in place. And that basically forms kind of the back end of the car. A little bit of adjustment and everything is popped in place. So there is a little bit of a patch of white plastic. So that's where the part was mounted for priming earlier. And I'm going back in to reprime that as it will be visible once the seats are in. So I'm then giving the exhausts a coat of, I think it's pale burnt metal uh, from Alclad. And there we go, as you can see, the suspension uh, shock absorbers were primed in white and are now being painted in red. I could then mask off the red areas and then pick out any of the details in whatever metallic shades they probably require. So once again, once all those parts are dried, can now start assembling some of the suspension and brakes for the rear. So there is, of course, a poly cap inside the hub. And the disc brake will just sit on top of that. Now, in fairness, on this kit, the brakes are barely visible. The, the wheels are pretty solid. So you're not really going to see very much. But nonetheless, those parts are painted. As you can see, we add in lower wishbone, suspension arms, etc. And we've got an almost complete rear end to the car. So a similar process is then undertaken for the front. Uh, we've got hubs, uh, brake disc, steering mechanism. So of course the steering on this car is poseable. So these will not be, the hubs themselves will not be glued in place. Uh, merely the upper and lower control arms. But surprisingly enough, the fit on this kit is really, really good. Uh, and I don't expect any problems in terms of alignment or right height issues. Everything seems to fit snugly and very well. So once that's done, it's back to the interior. So I left the seats in the UMP black primer. I'm now applying the decals from the kit. Uh, I was running low on photo etch harness sets. Or at least I didn't have one that I wanted to sacrifice for this kit. So I've decided to go with the kit decals, which look all right, but are nowhere near as effective as using the photo etch sets. And then, of course, a little bit of CA glue and those seats can be popped into place in the interior. Just, just like that. So with that complete, it's time to move on to the dashboard. There is, of course, the obligatory decals for the dials. They get popped in place using the normal kind of deckling methods. And I'm using a little bit of UMP Strong just to make sure they settle in those recesses absolutely perfectly. And after a little bit of detail painting of the steering wheel, you can assemble that to the steering column with a little bit of CA glue. And then, of course, that can get mounted to the dashboard. Once again, using some CA glue. just like that and it pops in place and then that all pops inside the dashboard surround now the dash on this gets mounted on the inside of the body so it doesn't get assembled to the chassis so that can be set aside for later as you can see that is all neatly done so yeah nowhere to fit it so it's set aside and left for later so bodywork itself has been the 2K has been curing for a couple of weeks. 
uh, that's completely hardened so it's time to go in and attack it with some micro mesh just to remove any flat spots any high spots uh, just to flat it back a little bit it can greatly improve the appearance of 2k uh, it kind of gets rid of any of the false curves that you sometimes get with 2k with the way it flows so starting off with the i think it's 6000 micro mesh is it six eight and twelve but yeah wet sanding using some water doing a little bit of sanding going back and checking it drying it off and then progressing my way around the body progressing through the grades until i'm happy that any blemishes i don't like are removed Now, of course, one of the challenges with any kind of flatting back process is to make sure you avoid any of the edges because the 2K, the paint, everything is a lot thinner at the edges and it's very easy to burn through. So you do have to be extra careful when getting towards the edges. But luckily enough on this kit, there was no, uh, there was no errors of that nature. And everything polishes up absolutely fine. And speaking of polish, it's on to the UMP polishing system next. And that's just to restore the shine from the flattening process that we've just done previously. So using the UMP compound number one and then the UMP polish number two. So just applying that to the body panels, waiting for it to haze over and then buffing it off. And then once finished with the compound, We'll then progress on to the polish. So of course at this stage, the, the polish is basically restoring the full shine. Any kind of subsequent waxing or shine products are just to enhance that shine. But really at this stage, you should have a perfectly clean, fully polished uh, bodywork. As you can see, it gets washed down using the toothbrush you can see on the left, just to remove any residue from any of the panel gaps as required. And then it's just dried off thoroughly, checked over to make sure I've polished everything that I need to polish. And once I'm happy with that, I can now move on to masking up for any of the rubber seal areas around the windscreen and the doors. Uh, so reasonably complex shapes on this. Uh, sometimes I like to cut them out, uh, but because of the shallowness of the the actual, we'll say the border, the edge around the windscreen, I'm going to use some azo tape just to mask it out. So I'm using very thin azo tape just to block out uh, the the key shape, and then I'm progressing on to the larger Tamiya tapes just to progressively build up that area, and then that will eventually go to fully masking the body just for what is essentially three little sections of semi-gloss black. And that's exactly what you can see here. I'm just moving on to the slightly thicker tapes. And once that's complete, we end up with a fully masked body or nearly masked in this particular video because I still need to finish some of the underside. But hey, as ever, once that's done, it's back over to the spray booth. I'm using X18 from Tamiya just to spray some semi-gloss black for those window rubbers. So just to make sure there's no bleed through, that's starting off with very light coats, building it up. Just continue doing light coats until you're happy with the complete coverage that you get. If you spray in light coat, you won't get any run. You won't get any runs in the paint. Uh, you can get a little bit of bleed if there's a bit of a lift on the edge of the tape. You can get some overspray come through. But if you spray light coats, it's not going to bleed through heavily. But how's ever, that job's been done. And now it's the uh, slightly easier task of removing all the masking tape. Of course, you still need to be careful. Uh, if you've detacked it properly, there should be limited risk, but you should always just be careful anyway, just to make sure that you don't lift any of the clear, the decals, the paint, because it can still happen at this stage. So carefully peel back all of that masking tape. and Eventually we get back to the very thin tapes around the edge. And that's a fully masking tape removed kit at that stage. 
So with that complete, it's time to move on to assembling uh, various parts that go inside the body. Uh, so there's various bits of trim that sit inside, the inside of the door cards. So they have to go in after the, the, the glass goes in. So the glass goes in first. That's secured in place with some CA glue. And then the door inserts can be placed in also with some CA glue. So as you can see, just pressing them in place, making sure they're fully adhered. Once they are in place, it's time to try and get this chassis inside the body. Now, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. It's quite a challenge to get it in there. But if you start from the front and kind of basically squeeze the body apart gently, you will get that chassis inside and it will just pop down absolutely perfectly, as we can see. So with that done, we can add things like the headlights. So they're just popped in place using some uh, glue and glaze from Deluxe Materials, which is basically a PVA glue. It's also, of course, a couple more decals for things like the windscreen. Uh, some cars will have rally plates as well. Uh, I think on this, there's some registration plates as well, which need to have decals applied. Of course, the lights need to be added, uh, so they were brush painted off screen. A little bit of PVA glue, and they're dropped into place. So PVA is perfect for these low weight items, of course. Uh, and it's easy to remove if you have any kind of glue spill out from any of the components you're gluing. And doesn't cause any damage to your 2K. So now we can assemble tires onto the wheels. Wheels were painted much earlier on when the body was done. Once, of course, the tires are on, can pop those wheels uh, onto their respective corners on the car, and they slide in absolutely perfectly into the poly caps. Uh, surprisingly, probably the best fitting wheels I've had in a long time. I've had ones recently which have just fought me the whole way. These ones are absolutely spot on. So with that in place, the gloves come out. Try and limit the amount of fingerprints at least I get on the kit. And then a few other parts like the spoiler, the rear tailgate. Those parts can all be glued in place once again using some PVA. For ones I've actually included the fog lamps, because I think they look quite nice on this car. They have got the covers on them, so there's no actual light lenses in there. Then of course the spoiler is added for the rear. And then I think there's a very final step of adding the wing mirrors. So once again, a little bit of PVA glue. Uh, for things like wing mirrors, it's worth a little bit of a dry fit just to make sure that any of the holes for the for the wing mirrors haven't been kind of partially blocked up by the 2K. If it has, gently use a drill bit just to open them up a little bit. And then we're left with this, which is basically the final kit. So... Uh, Hopefully, if I've edited this video correctly, there is going to be some photos of the final kit. I knew they were there somewhere. So there we go. That is the final version, the final kit of the 124th Hasegawa Lancia Stratos for the Griffoni team from the 1980 San Marino Rally. Uh, I believe this car didn't actually finish the rally, but it certainly started it looking fantastic. And with that complete, it's time to go back to me for final thoughts. So final product, very pleased. I think it looks good. The white issues aside, 
why I'm really happy with it. Happy with how the paint went down, happy with the clear coat. Decals went on absolutely fine from Hasegawa. The fit was spot on. A little bit of a challenge to get the chassis into the body. Uh, but, you know, that that kind of shape of Balancia Stratos body meant it was always going to be a kind of a tight wraparound fit. Uh, so that was kind of, that was pretty much expected to be a challenge. But, you know, it, it went in, it all went together well, it didn't break anything. And, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. That was, when I built that, that was a bit of a... A bit of a mojo builder and it really did the trick uh, so yeah so really enjoyed that uh, I would probably build another Hasegawa Stratos based on this build I, I, I think at some point even even though it's become I don't know cliche iconic the martini scheme uh, I don't have one I've not built one so I think that would be nice to get at some point uh, and I would definitely build it again so I can't say kind of can't say fairer than that about the kit really so uh so yeah so really pleased with it kind of you can kind of see from the videos i've managed to condense them down to not not a huge amount of footage but there's not a huge of huge amount of kind of tricky stuff in the kit it's it's fairly straightforward it assembles well the, the fit is pretty good uh it's mainly kind of make sure that the cleanup of you know seam lines is done properly uh getting the body onto the chassis is probably the most challenging fit issue other than that it it's a, it's a really good kit uh clear parts could be a little bit better but i'm not gonna you know that that's the nature of that kind of heavily curved glass means optical clarity is going to be difficult you know, if it was as thin as some of the screens you get in, say, a Tamiya kit, I think it'd probably break in the box far too easily. So uh, I can kind of forgive Hasegawa for that. And it's a relatively old kit as well. So reasonably top marks to Hasegawa. Pleased with the kit myself. Pleased it's in the stash. Kind of want to crack on with a couple of more Lancias at some point because I've got the, I've got a Delta, got an 037, got an S4 as well. Uh, it would be nice to have like a nice uh, kind of Lancia, I won't say Dio, but you know, a curated collection of Lancias would be nice. But there we go. Let's uh, leave it at that. So as I said before, if you're if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Please like the video. Uh, if videos get to 50 likes, it, it kind of really helps generate more traffic because it appears on non-subscribers lists more more frequently. So getting to that 50 mark will be quite useful. And of course, if you have a comment, uh, feel free to leave one. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon. Thanks and, and bye bye for now.